So we're in the middle of a remodel at the house and we decided very early on that we were not going to go with like Corian or quartz or granite, you know, marble countertops for our kitchen. We decided we were going to do something fun with wood and then, you know, whatever. But after today's pour, I actually decided that maybe I will be changing my mind on this and I might be going with some cool marbled rock countertops after all. Now, before I tell you why today's pour has changed my mind, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are here for another round of 365 days of soap, and today, Georgia May is making a marbled soap. Now, I love a good marbled soap. You know, the, the designs and the variations and everything within a, a marbled soap are absolutely astronomical. They have just the coolest there's so much that you can do with them, really. I mean, you can put in mica veins, you can put in alcohol, all of the things. And Georgia May has been very intrigued with marble soaps. And so she decided that she wanted to try her hand at a marble soap for the first time. So that's what we are doing today. Now, before we get into, you know, the actual techniques and the pores and everything, I do want to preface this with Georgia May has never made a marbled soap before. Let's just drive that point home. And then, you know, at the end of the video, you can drop a comment and say, way to go, Georgia May, because she's good at everything that she does. But let's go watch her be good at it. Okay, so, wait, what's going on here? The thing is all like stylized. We've got some really weird stylized, uh, you know, lighting and stuff going on here. So fun. Uh, that's, that's cool. Let's, let's play with that. And yeah, so this is a uh, Georgia May's marbled soap. So a couple days ago I had done a soap for a wedding. So it was a custom order for wedding favors. And I did a marbled pattern inside of it. And uh, Georgia May decided that she wanted to try her hand at marbling soap as well. And so that is what she is doing today. Now, the oil blend that she is working with is our swirls mix. And so the swirls mix is about 70% liquid oils and 30% solid. So it should stay fluid for her to do her thing throughout the entirety of the pour, which is very, very good. And she is doing, looks like we've got some white and black and there's some gold and she's got the kaolin clay that she's going to put in here that has been dispersed in water and yeah interestingly again like it's 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 interesting how we we do soap different like she puts the kaolin clay in now and i put it in at the very end and i put it in at the very end because it's an extra liquid that goes in and so if the soap batter is getting a little bit thick you can essentially have a secondary liquid phase and loosen up the batter enough to do whatever you need to with it during the pour. Uh, but she puts it in at the beginning and I think she puts, she does that because of a color thing, right? So she wants to make sure that the colors that she wants are dialed in and really beautiful. And then obviously if you were to put the Kaylin in after that, it would then mute those colors and what you were going for. And then you would have to get the the, the mic is out and you know fix the color or do nothing which is what I do um, and just roll with the more pastel colors so it's smart that she does it this way too I, I love it and so she has poured off some of this soap batter into these two beakers here she's got two different looks like she's got two different blacks going on so I guess we're going to see 
what that all means. And there's, I don't know, maybe two or three ounces in the beaker that she's using right now. And six or seven ounces in the beaker that's over there. So two different blacks. I don't, and in two different, I mean, that looks kind of like a more blue-y. Oh, it's gray. Okay, so we're going with gray and black. Got it. Okay, so she's going to be doing a marble pattern with grays and blacks. And I think she, I saw a, a squeeze bottle or a um, little sifter squeeze shaker thing, whatever, of gold as well. So I think she's going to put some gold into this somewhere too, which is super awesome. Now, for the scent blend that she has selected for this, she has decided to go with a rosemary pepper, which is a really lovely blend. We use this in soap making classes and it has just such good performance to it, right? Like it's very, um, it's bright, right? Because you have the rosemary in it and that's very like herbaceous. But then the pepper sort of gives it an interesting spicy kick. It's a, it's a delight. It's definitely a favorite in the soap classes when we're, you know, teaching at the shop and as far as the product the performance goes in the soap it does not accelerate trace it does not discolor so it makes it a nice really workable blend um, for any soap project so that's super awesome and this is one of my personal favorites as far as blends go so she's going to um, looks like she didn't quite have enough to do into the, the black or maybe that was intentional I really don't know, you guys. We are all watching this at the exact same time together. So I am just going to guess what she's doing right along, you know, with, with, with you for, for this one. And I think that's cool. But it looks like everything is uh, mixed up and ready to go for her pour. And let's see what she decides to do for her pour for the marbling. Okay, so for her pour, she's going to do an in-the-pot swirl, and she's doing a very interesting in-the-pot swirl. So normally for in-the-pot swirls, you kind of take one color, and if you're looking at like, you know, a compass, you would put the colors at one of the colors at like north and south, right? And then you would take the other color, and you would put it just in circles uh, east and west, and then give it a couple swirls, and do the thing, but she is not doing that at all. She did a full turn with the gray multiple times around the you know circle, and then for the black, she put it just directly in the middle in a plus pattern, and then now she's moving everything into itself here, which will actually theoretically create some very beautiful marbles. Marbling, you have to be careful with mixing your, that's gorgeous, yes, well done, be proud of that. Yeah, and she's going to do that. Okay, so now this is what I was about to say. You have to be careful with your mixing of your colors. If you are skewering or then, you know, then swirling it around like that, like you would do in a, uh, like a spin swirl technique, because it can muddy the colors together and you end up with a whole lot of gray or brown, depending on what colors you're using. And also it will take some of the really crisp lines of swirls away. But for a marbling technique, that's perfect. That's kind of what you want. You don't really want the really crisp lines to, to exist in the, uh, in the soap itself. You want more muted changes in colors. Muted doesn't really make any sense, but you know, less stark. And then the video got weird. And so we are skipping straight to the top, which she has sprayed with a bunch of gold mica. And now she's putting the rest of the black that she had left in the beakers on top to design the top and give it a nice, beautiful, you know, pattern. And knowing Georgia May, it's going to be extraordinary because it always is. And yeah, okay, so she's doing a little figure eight infinity thing going on first, and that's delightful. And then what is she going to do? Now, she's not doing the entire bar. It's just the tip. It's just the top. So she just has the tip of the skewer in there just to decorate the top. And 
Oh, okay. I love it. It's great. I, I'm always a fan of that. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful. Look at that, you guys. Look how gorgeous that top is. That is lovely. Oh, you're going to keep going with it, huh? Oh, no, we're just going to clean up the edges. That looks so nice. That might be one of the prettiest tops I've ever seen ever in the history of ever. And I cannot wait to see what this looks like when it is all finished with its saponification thing and we get a chance to cut it tomorrow. Now this will be going into the oven. We will definitely be pushing it through gel. It's not really necessary though. She used activated charcoal for the black and gel does not actually help activated charcoal one iota. But I do want to make sure that there's no soda ash or anything on top of that. So it'll get sprayed down and put in the oven to keep that beautiful gold that's on top there, really. And then we will uh, cut it and check it out tomorrow and see the marbling that's going on inside. Okay, now we're on to cut day. And this part I do know because I was here to do the cutting of things. And the top is beautiful. I love how it kept the cool texture from the, the pole with the uh, skewer. Such a beautiful top. The entire bar itself really well formed. Everything looks very nice. No problems whatsoever. There are no, you know, air pockets. There's just, there's, there's nothing wrong with this, with this loaf of soap. It looks beautiful. But here's the thing for marbling, you, I, when I got in, I asked, you know, George May how she wanted me to cut it and, or how she wanted to cut it. Are we going to go top down or are we going to cut it, you know, like you would for a mantra or are we going to cut it what, like you would for thin lines? And she thought, why don't we try all of them and see what it looks like with all three. And so right now what I am doing is I'm chunking it into sections so we can cut sections different and uh, see what we have going on there. And that was the camera almost falling and you know ruining everything. So that's what it would look like if we were to just cut that top down into one inch bars like you know with your regular soap cutter. And that's cute. Um, I don't really see any marbling going on. It's very cool like it's very cool like that is a very pretty bar. But I wouldn't exactly call that marbling right? And it's it's lovely. It's wispy and just delightful. And there's some very cool soap row shot going on in those. And I am here for that. But like that, I see, well, I guess you tell me what you see really in, in that because I, I saw something. And then if I tell you what I saw, then you're only going to see that. So anyway, for this one, we are going to cut it like we would cut for a thin lines. So for thin lines, we would cut from one end of the soap to, um, from one end of the soap, instead of cutting, you know, from the top down, like you would with a regular standard bar or like a Lotus, you would turn it over on its side and cut essentially the top off and the bottom off. And there'd be a, uh, you know, a chunk in the middle. So for this one, we're going to cut from one side of the block to another to expose the pattern again, like you would do for thin lines. Now this particular mold is not really set up for the properly sized thin lines soaps because the width on these guys is, well, I mean, I think it's about two and a half. I don't know. I just had the tape measure out and I guess I wasn't paying attention, but it makes for really, really thick bars as a result. And so this ends up being kind of a waste of a uh, soap if you're looking from like a saleable perspective. And that's perfectly cute too. I like that. That's uh, some decent marbling. It's not much different than what you saw with the original chunk though, is it? So I'm not sure. Oh, look at me and my terrible cutting skills. Yes, I know how to do things, whatever. Uh, it's very cool. It's very, it's, but again, it's very similar to what we would see if we just did a top down one inch cut with that. So this particular pour doesn't super work out for cutting it with thin lines. So let's try cutting it essentially on the side into three pieces and exposing 
you know, kind of the in, the internal pattern that way. And yeah, no, the, um, the only bad thing about cutting it this way would be that, see that beautiful top that George May made. I mean, it was just so stunning. And cutting it this way means that one out of every three bars will have that top. Like that will be the entirety of the bar. It's just the top of the soap, the decorated top. And the other two that you cut from that. And that is beautiful. Look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. I love that. But that one has the really pretty internal pattern, but on the back, it is that gorgeous top that George May made. And so that means that these two bars, they don't have the beautiful gold and everything in them, but that is freaking lovely. So do you even care that you don't have the gold top? That's absolutely stunning. This is actually a really good way to do a wood grain. I wouldn't necessarily call this marbling. Now, she was planning on doing some gold veins inside the soap and then she sort of forgot while she was pouring or whatever. And so that's what she was telling me as I was cutting the things. And I think the addition of gold would have really sealed the deal to be, yeah, this is totally marbling. But for me, what this looks like is more um, wood grain than anything else. This is a really nice way to do a wood grain. Now here, look, you've got a new, you got a new wood, new way to do a wood grain soap. I love that. That's pretty. But again, pretty top only exists one out of every three bars if you're doing, if you're doing it this way. And you know, I think that's okay. I, I cut the, uh, for your skin only bar that way, the, uh, the bond bar and one out of every three bars get the really pretty top that I have always, always done and always decorated, even though I know that only one out of three, you know, okay, it, it's all a thing. So I don't have any problem with that. It's just something to keep in mind, you know, when you're making. And that's nice. I could get behind that. I think it looks, there's kind of a, a bird going on there. She pointed out a bird in that one, that black spot in the upper right hand corner of that soap that it looked like a bird. Again, this is a really good soap batch for Soap Rorschach. There's lots of fun things that you can see in all of the, uh, in each different soap. And so that's amazing. And I really enjoy doing Soap Rorschach with the Sudsers. because it's always fun to see what they, what they see, really. But there is a Georgia May's marbled soap technique that is her first attempt with the medium. And I love them. I'm having a hard time figuring out which one I like the most to put up there. Again, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. I wouldn't go so far as to say marbled with these, but this is a super stunning wood grain with all of it. And the colors are great and everything that she did was just spot on. And again, the prettiest soap top to ever exist, ever. So, you know, slam dunk Georgia May across the board. This is an excellent, an excellent bar of soap. And because you use the swirls mix, the lather is great, nice and creamy. And yeah, this is a big win. That's day 114, George May's marble soap. Beautiful, right? I know. I really want to change my countertops now. After seeing this, I, I am really considering doing, you know, an actual stone countertop where I definitely was not considering that before. So way to go, Georgia May. It's actually less work for us to have those installed as opposed to what we were going to do with our wood things. Speaking of wood things, this would actually make a very good wood grain pour as well. Now she did not put in the mica lines as she had planned on doing within this, this soap. And I think it actually worked out really well anyway. It's very beautiful. And as you can see, there are multiple ways that you can cut this to really release some cool patterns, much like with a thin lines pour or, you know, a lotus going from top or doing the regular. And ultimately, because she made such a beautiful top on this, it's kind of sad that the best way to cut it for this particular pour was with the lotus cut because that means only a third of the bars essentially get the awesome top. So keep that in mind when you're making your marble soaps for sure. And I think she'll definitely keep that in mind for her marble soaps in the future. And I'm sure she's going to be wanting to do another one soon. So you'll get to see her take two. But 
as it stands, her take one was beautiful. So if you're interested in it, it's on the website. You can find it at soapandplay.com. If you're interested in more soapy antics, subscribe to the channel, do the things. We're here every day. You could be here every day too. Anyway, that does do it for me today. I really do appreciate you being here for another round of 365 days of soap, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.